<laughs> All right, let's go to the next subject. <laughs> next spin. Yes, next spin. I just like watching it spin. We're going to try to get to all of them, but hey. Slow machine. Yeah, but we have to go in order, right? <laughs> yeah, we have to do it fairly. <laughs> oh, cat loss and grief. talked about this quite a bit um the one thing that i really want to just drive home with this subject for everybody is it's okay guys you know what i just saw god i wish i knew i wish i would have saved it um i just came across uh a veterinarian on tiktok that did a video talking about um talking about grief about grief of you know, pet pet owners when their pets pass or they have to have them euthanized. Because one of the biggest things I always hear people say is, you know, I feel bad. I let them down. You know, I wish I could have done better. Um, and one of the things that this person was saying in this TikTok video was, you really have to make sure that um, that you understand that you are doing what's best. You're you're saving them from a painful, long, dragged out, miserable passing and instead you're giving them the best option possible you are doing what the best for them you are doing what's right for them and you are you are taking care of them and you are not letting them down and what i really want to drive home for other people for people to remember is your grief is your grief okay nobody can tell you how to grieve nobody can tell you how long to grieve and the problem with grief is grief can be such a deceptive thing in your own mind it can tell you bad things. Like it can tell you, your grief can make you believe that you did something wrong. Your grief can make you believe that there were things you could have done differently. Your grief is gonna make you believe that you let down your animal. And none of those things are true. None of those things are true. None of those things are. You're doing the best thing you can. Like for my, for, for me with Farah or with Phoenix, um, both situations were situations where my animals were at the end of their life and I knew that. And by not doing things the way I did them, I was condemning them to a long, painful, drawn out life of misery and pain that they were gonna suffer through. But I didn't let that happen. Now, did I want to let them go? No, of course not, of course not. But I couldn't look at it with the sense of what do I want here? I had to look at them, look at the situation as what is best for them. Because a lot of times we are dealing with a situation where we have to make that call. And it's not fair. It's not fair that we have to make that call. We have to say goodbye and we have to make that, that decision. That's a sucky decision to make. But at the same time, it's such a blessing, isn't it? It's such a blessing that we have the right to do that, that we can make that call, that we can make that decision. We can save them from that. Because you know what the weird thing is? We don't have that same luxury when it comes to our loved ones, human loved ones. When we, when we see a loved one suffering you know, through the end stages of cancer, where they're in pain and their you know, their quality of life is not there anymore. We don't get to make that decision and save them from that pain and put them out of that misery and let them p pass with dignity. We have no choice but to just sit back and just watch them suffer. Whereas with our pets, we can do something. So it's kind of one of those things where it's like, Yes, it sucks, but at the same time, it's really a blessing that we get to do that. We get to give them that final bit of peace. Um, and it's a, it's a difficult thing, but we all have to face it. We do. My cat is everything, but he's 14 and getting older. My life without him is unimaginable. Deborah, I am with you. You know, I have Fleen. I have Fleen, who's 15. And believe me, those, those thoughts are starting to be, you know, very real in my mind. So I'm with you 100%. I don't know. Feline, Feline's a tough one for me because I've had her since she was six weeks old, you know, six, six, seven weeks old. And so I've had her for 15 years and she has, it's not just how long I've had her, but what we have been through together. We've been through so much together. She was my first baby. She was the beginning of all this. And she has been there with me through two divorces, through a marriage. She has been there with me through some of the most horrendous parts of my addiction, 
moving around, being homeless, and you name it, she's been there for me. She's been there with me through being raided, through thrown in jail. She, and I have kept her no matter what has happened. She has still been there with me. And then she was with me as I got sober and as I got my life back together and as I bought a house and moved to a new state and started all this. She's been there through so much that it's not just a cat at this at, anymore. She's not just a cat. None of my cats are just cats, but especially Feline because of what, what she's been through with me. She's so much more, and believe me, I know it, it's going to be a hard thing when she when she goes. But the reality is, is that she is going to go. But again, your grief is your grief. You grieve the way you need to grieve. You process your feelings. If you want to cry, you cry. If you want to cry for days, you cry for days. But you do. It's important that you feel it. It's important that you go through every bit of it, no matter how hard it is. Go through it. Feel it. You deserve to do that. You have the right to do that. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. And it's never going to go away. That's the other part. I hope people don't go into it thinking it's going to get easier. It's never going to get easy. Well, it depends. Easier is a relative term. It's going to get easier in the sense that time is going to pass. Time is going to soften the pain. Time is going to help heal those wounds. Time, time is going to give you more clarity in order to look at the situation differently and with, with healthier eyes and not such wounded eyes. And you're going to learn how to cope. Are you ever going to be free of that pain and that grief? No, of course not. That'll never go away because you love them and they, they, you, they deserve for you to feel that way and to remember them. Um, but just know that it's okay to feel that way. Kim, that's exactly yeah. how I feel about my hope, my hope because... I know. To this day, you will still get. Sorry to interrupt time. you, I but oh, you're good. I, I read Deborah's chat about her 14 year old. Yeah. Yeah, Hobie, I had since birth, and that yep. the day that we I had to put him down was quite possibly yep. one of the hardest days that I've lived, and I'm, you know. <laughs> yeah. No. I, I, I think people think people always like to say, "Oh, it's just a cat, or it's just an animal." No, it's really not. It's a piece of our life. It's a piece of our, our, our heart. It's a piece of us. For a lot of people, these animals are no different than children. And you're talking to somebody who, yes, I have children. So I can honestly say that every one of these little babies, uh, every one of these little babies from the oldest right down to the youngest one right here, who's got wet feeties. Why you got wet feeties? Were you playing in the water? Hey, were you, you were playing. In, okay. Um, but every one of them, holds, you know, holds a special place in my heart, no different than my children. And I mean that my kids know that too. It's not because I love my kids any less. It's because I love my cats that much. 